Hello everyone. Welcome to XDynamo. In this project, we will learn about design of Kaplan turbine using MATLAB and SolidWorks. Here is the project sequence. We will go through the introduction to Kaplan turbine. Then we will understand the velocity diagrams in detail. The next step is to select a suitable blade profile. Using fluid mechanics equations, we will develop a MATLAB code to generalize the design process. The turbine blade coordinates are exported to a text file. Using these coordinates, the 3D model of Kaplan Turbine Runner is designed in SolidWorks. While eight, let's dive into this project. Introduction Kaplan Turbine works on the principle of axial flow reaction. In axial flow turbines, the water flows through the runner, along the direction parallel to the axis of, rotation of the runner. Kaplan turbine is now widely used throughout the world, for high flow and low head power production. For the axial flow reaction turbine, the shaft of the turbine is vertical. The lower end of the shaft is made larger, which is known as a hub or boss. The vanes are fixed on the hub and, hence, the hub acts as a runner for the, axial flow reaction turbine. Here are the main components of Kaplan Turbine. Scroll casing. Guide vane mechanism. Runner of the turbine. Draft tube. Kaplan Turbine Runner. The runner is the rotating part of the turbine, which helps in the production of electricity. The runner shaft is connected to the, shaft of the generator. The blades of the runner are adjustable to, optimum angle of attack for maximum power output. The blades of the Kaplan turbine, have twist along its length. Twist along its length in the Kaplan turbine is provided, because to have always the optimum angle of strike, for all cross sections of blades, and hence, to achieve greater efficiency of the turbine. To understand the reason behind the twisting of turbine blades, we have to understand the velocity diagrams, and optimum angle of attack. Angle of attack. As an airfoil cut through the relative wind, an aerodynamic force is produced. This aerodynamic force can be broken down into two components, lift and drag. The lift produced by an airfoil is the net force produced, perpendicular to the relative wind. The drag incurred by an airfoil is the net force produced, parallel to the relative wind. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line and the relative wind. Optimum angle of attack. What does the optimum angle of attack means? The main purpose of an airfoil is to create the maximum possible lift force, while maintaining the least amount of drag force. The efficiency of an airfoil is measured by the ratio of lift coefficient to drag coefficient. The optimum angle of attack is the angle of attack of a given airfoil, that corresponds to the maximum value of lift to drag ratio, CL by CD, value and thus, the highest cruise efficiency. Look at CL by CD, versus alpha graph of, NACA 4412 airfoil. The maximum value of CL by CD, occurs at 5 degrees. The optimum angle of attack is 5 degrees. Now it's time to discuss about velocity diagrams. Blade profile. To understand velocity diagrams, consider cross section of the blade at inner plane, located at a distance of D1, from the runner axis. Velocity diagram. Consider the inlet side of the runner blade. The water enters at an angle due to guide vanes. V in, is the absolute velocity of water at the inlet. Inlet velocity has two components. The tangential component is VW1, which is the whirl velocity at inlet. The vertical component is VF1, which is the flow velocity at inlet. As the blade rotates about the runner axis, U1 is the blade velocity. Due to the rotation of blade, water enters the turbine blade, with a relative velocity of VR1. Beta1 is the inlet blade angle. It is the angle between relative velocity and blade velocity. Here is the cord line that connects the leading edge of the airfoil with its trailing edge. Observe that the relative velocity is not directed along the cord line. We already discussed that the angle of attack is the angle made by the relative velocity, with the cord line. The airfoil section is inclined in such a way that, this angle becomes the optimum angle of attack. 
These are the equations to calculate the blade velocity and blade angle at the inlet. Phi is the inclination angle of the blade section with horizontal. Phi equals to beta 1 minus optimum angle of attack. Here is the entire cross section of the blade. This is the velocity diagram at the inlet. Look at the velocity diagram at the blade outlet. VR2 is the relative velocity at blade outlet. Beta 2 is the outlet blade angle. Here is the equation to calculate outlet blade angle. Have a look at the Kaplan blade profile. The blade is twisted along its length. To understand the reason behind the twisting of blade profile, consider cross section of the blade at an outer plane, located at a distance of D2, from the runner axis. Let us assume that the blade has no twist. Consider the blade section at D1, that we discussed previously. Here is the velocity diagram at the intersection. Now, look at the outer section of the blade at D2. As the blade is not twisted along its length, both the sections at D1 and D2, are inclined at the same angle. As D2 is greater than D1, blade velocity at section 2, will be greater than the, blade velocity at section 1. Also, the blade angle at section 2, will be lesser than the, blade angle at section 1. Here is the velocity diagram at D2 section. Compare both velocity diagrams. We can observe the change in blade velocities, UD1, and UD2. Due to the increase in blade velocity, the relative velocity at section 2, is inclined at a different angle, compared to relative velocity at section 1. Look at the angle of attack at section D2. The angle of attack is different from the previous section, and it is not equal to the optimum angle of attack. If the twist is not provided to turbine blades, it is not possible to operate all the sections of a blade, at the optimum angle of attack. This reduces the efficiency of turbine blades. As the angle of attack is not optimum at the outer plane of the blade profile, the outer section of the blade, is twisted by a certain angle, so that the angle of attack becomes optimum value. Here is the velocity diagram on the twisted blade. Twist along its length in the Kaplan turbine is provided, to have always the optimum angle of strike, for all cross sections of blades, and hence, to achieve greater efficiency of the turbine. Now we will discuss the design procedure of the Kaplan turbine. Here is the problem statement. Let us design a Kaplan turbine capable of producing 500 kilowatts power output under the available head of 6 meters. Only the power output required and available head are provided in the problem statement. We will discuss the steps to be followed in detail that are required to design a Kaplan turbine from given inputs. Let us design a Kaplan turbine capable of producing 500 kilowatts power output under the available head of 6 meters. Here are the inputs given in the problem statement. Power output, P equals 2, 500 kilowatts. Head available, H equals 2, 6 meters. Step 1. Finding out discharge, specific speed, and turbine speed. Assume the overall efficiency of turbine is 85%. Power output, P equals to overall efficiency times, rho GQH. From this equation, the discharge Q can be calculated. Here is the equation to calculate the, specific speed of the turbine using H. Turbine speed N can be calculated, from the value of specific speed using this equation. Step 2. Runner diameter and hub diameter. Runner diameter equals to 84.5 times, phi, root h divided by n. Here is the equation to calculate the value of phi. For 6 meters head, the diameter ratio, m equals to 0.4. Hub diameter equals 2, m times runner diameter. Step 3, flow velocity and whirl velocity. Look at the formula of discharge through Kaplan turbine. Flow velocity vf, equals to discharge divided by flow area. Here is the equation to calculate flow velocity. Let us consider Euler's equation for power output. VW2 is zero for Kaplan turbines with axial outlet. The average blade velocity is considered in this equation. The whirl velocity, VW, equals to P divided by rho Q times U average. Here is the equation to calculate average blade velocity. Step 4. 
Blade Angles The blade angles can be obtained from velocity diagrams. Inlet and outlet blade angles can be calculated using these equations. Step 5. Number of runner blades. For 6 meters head and diameter ratio of 0.4, the number of blades is obtained as 6. Step 6. Cord length of airfoil at any section I. Blade spacing, D equals to circumference pi D, divided by Z. Cord length C varies from 0.75 T, at outer diameter, to 1.3 T, at inner diameter. Step 7. Choosing airfoil for turbine blade cross-section. NACA 4000 series airfoils are generally used for Kaplan turbine blades. NACA 4412 airfoil is used in this project. Step 8. Finding out the angle of twist at different planes. The NACA airfoil coordinates file, corresponds to airfoil with horizontal cord. But the airfoil section needs to be inclined, at certain angle as we discussed earlier. We have to scale and rotate the coordinates, using the transformation matrix. The angle of rotation, theta, equals to 180 minus, beta 1, plus theta optimum. Here is the list of all the equations needed to design a Kaplan turbine. In the next video, we will use these equations to develop a MATLAB code. The next video will be very interesting. We will use both MATLAB and SOLIDWORKS to generate the 3D model of the Kaplan turbine. That's all for this video. If you get value from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to XDynamo. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in our next video.